demigods, beings whose mere existence was so cataclysmic that they would dominate entire story arcs, committing atrocities on a mass scale and forcing our heroes into tense, desperate battles. That wasn't until Frieza, though. The tense battles, yes, that was everybody. But massive scale, that wasn't really until Frieza. Vegeta threw, blew up a planet that it basically did didn't really matter. matter. And I think that was a filler arc, but I'm not 100% sure on it that one. It was a filler arc. I think it happened in a manga, him just going pew. Okay, yeah. He blew up an inconsequential planet. It just, who cares? Where survival seemed unlikely and victory felt impossible. No longer monsters of the stronger. weak. Until, you know, oh, we almost died, but then we didn't. So stronger. Okay. Thanks. Luffy and Luchi had beat each other up for upwards of like 20 episodes. Luffy got this final burst of speed and then he was laid out for like five episodes. If that didn't work, he'd have died. But he's just like, based upon the damage I, he, I've inflicted on him for these past 20 episodes and this last rush that I've got of a million punches, Hopefully this beats this dude, if not death. Because I'm not getting back Cause up. Because I'm not getting back up, and these dudes ain't taking care of him. <laughs> so that, that's what happened there. He didn't automatically just miraculously get stronger or find his resolve. He just went last-ditch effort. <laughs> it wasn't until Usopp was like, Come on, I'll beat you. And it's like, Usopp, he's going to kill you. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? Stop him from killing me or he kills me. <laughs> Get up and stop acting like you going to die and beat this mother so we can go home or shut up. Or that. And then he goes, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Not now I'm stronger. I'm at the same level, but I'm putting everything I got into this. And you know what? Luchi hit him with everything he had. He caught him by the tail and just went, this is the strongest I'm one. I'm going to destroy your insides. <laughs> and Luffy went, oh, my insides. <laughs> About to die. And he was unconsciously still standing. And then he went, this is it. <laughs> this is it. Jet Gatling fall. We both fall. And if you get up, we did. Robin, please roll me into the sea. Because <laughs> I can't even do that. Hey, where's Usopp? As Chopper carries him around the ship. Because he <laughs> can't stand. <laughs> it wasn't just, I almost got beat and now me strong. Well, now I'm just Super Saiyan 2 now. And you have no chance. You can... Uh, at least Nami attempts to uh, to excuse why Luffy and uh, Zoro got beat so badly. It's because their conviction was weak because they were uh, they didn't know how what side Robin was on. But once they learned about Robin dying for them, at least Luffy was just like, okay, let's cut the bush. Let's cut the bush. Cut L bush. And that's, that's what separates something amazing like One Piece from something that's just like, well, I'm an android and I want to kill Goku. There was and in 40 episodes. It was a rescue arc for somebody that didn't want to be rescued until she looked at her friends and said, please rescue me. Cause because I believe that you can because you made it this far. Because you, she, she looked at her past life is just like, it wiped out everybody and everything that I love. I am the last member of this race because the government wiped out everybody else. And they're going to do the same to you guys. Please stay away. No. Please rescue me. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. She's on the train and she's like, I'm not running. Don't kill them. Let's go. So great. I'm still open. Oh, gets up and he just pushes her down. It's like, that's great. Sanji, same thing. Same sort of parallel thing. Here is this unstoppable force who's just like, I've got people all around the world. I can kill anybody that you love and put their head in the box and mail that to you. I can do that infinitely. Come to my tea party. 
get married. Well, I can tell them this, and they're going to be like, no, and everybody going to die, or I can just do this. Get out of here, Luffy. No, come back here, otherwise you're going to find my shriveled corpse. My shriveled corpse dying of hunger, and his corpse was shriveled. <laughs> I'm not eating another piece of food unless it's made by you. And then he starts unconsciously making their favorite foods. Stuff like that is better than here comes Boo, this intergalactic tyrant. This uh, intergalactic regenerating tyrant. Oh. Th that is just the strongest. Oh, he has this tie to this supreme kind that we've never met that has never been mentioned until this point. He has a tie to him. And that's it. As opposed to, I got to get married to this chick, or you're gonna, or you're gonna mail my de facto father's head to me, and he has nothing to do with this. That's the difference. These were just monsters, routinely and soundly defeating our heroes. Just monsters. Ones that shattered the 22-minute structure and planted their feet deep in the story staying there for dozens and dozens of episodes, during which the entire plot would center solely around their existence. The story framed these villains in a way that made them feel so dominant and powerful that the idea of their defeat seemed genuinely impossible. Until, you know, the people just got even stronger. -er. Sure. Look at really how is Goku gonna get stronger -er to beat him? It wasn't like, how is Goku gonna beat him? When is Goku going to get strong yeah, enough to beat it, him? It's all just a matter of time. It's just, well, this is going to happen. Because <laughs> it has to. And it did. Constantly. Hody was not on Luffy's level. Not at all. He had to bush his way in order to hurt him. But he bushed a fight out of Luffy. And that's what happened. I'm not good enough to beat you. But I'm better in the water and you suck in the water, so we fighting in the water. So we fighting in the water. That's what's happening here. I brought you down to my level. I'm increased, you're decreased. Not just, oh, you're here? Well, I'm further now. Why? Because I got hurt two episodes ago, and now I'm oh healed. Oh my goodness. So now, so now I'm I'm just, I just further. tripled, I easily just tripled my power within a couple hours. Isn't that great? I'm going to sit in this tank after being beaten up, and I'm just going to quadruple my power. Isn't that great? Isn't that great storytelling? Whereas Piccolo had to absorb a member of his dying race, a, the strongest member of his dying race, after training with God. He comes over, fights, and then just gets demolished after a while. And then here comes this dude just like, I just sat in a tub, and now I'm stronger than you could ever hope to be. Created an exhilarating tension as you really felt every blow, every energy blast as our heroes inched our way forward in the face of such monstrously overwhelming odds. So when victory did occur, it felt profound and earned. No. And Cell was not earned. No. He just went... Gohan, you gotta blast them. Okay, Dad. And then he did. And then he blasted them. Hey, make a spirit bomb, Kakarot. Take Boo out. <laughs> I'll say Raditz was earned. Absolutely. They fought hard for that shit. That was about it. Nah, I would say Vegeta too. Yeah, that was a bit of a team effort. There was a lot of, like, stuff there. But then once you start getting into the Frieza saga, it's just, well, here's here's Vegeta fighting Zarbon. Oh, he's on his level. Oh, and then he transformed, and he's just not. And then the second fight, he just is, and then he kills him. Because he almost died, and he got healed. Okay. So within a couple episodes, this dude is getting demolished by him. And then through no introspect introspection, no training, nothing, he just comes in and is just raw stronger. How is that good? There's, he did not grow from that. That He just is stronger now. And it's such bullshit. So, you know, uh, it's hard. Okay. 
we're framing this as we are now as opposed to when we were kids. When mm-hmm. we were kids, we were glossy-eyed over Dragon Ball. But now you have to look at this in this light, and it's just like, uh, I didn't feel every blow. I was just interested in, you know, how strong people were. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like the blows and I felt it in the introspective of the villain. It was just like, Gohan is super strong and him awesome because him super strong. And that's as far as it went. I hate it. When I first saw it, I hated the Saiyan man stuff. The <laughs> Gohan goes Because it wasn't stuff. fight stuff. Because it wasn't big, strong fight stuff. And then the boo stuff came, the tournament argument. I was like, yes, we're back to it. Now, that's some of the best Dragon Ball Z stuff. The Saiyan Man arc is, is amazing. Videl is amazing. Instead of just these punch molds. Punch molds. One of the reasons Goku's victory over Frieza feels so monumental is that at this point in the story, you've watched Frieza decimate our heroes for dozens of episodes. But Goku played with him for like 20. As soon as he hit Super Saiyan, Frieza wasn't on his level no more. And Goku played the... He just kept playing with him in any way. You're done. Your power keeps dropping. You're not good enough for me. I'm out of here. Even after he went a full 100%. This is just like, well, this is whatever. I'm just too good for you, Frieza. So it wasn't like Frieza... Frieza decimated everybody up until the moment Goku turned to Super Saiyan. After that, it was like, it's over. So this whole Goku fighting him, and sh- it did not need to happen because Goku was infinitely better than him. Same thing with Super Vegeta. Super Vegeta could have killed Imperfect Cell, just didn't. It, was, it wasn't a, ooh, a, a big struggle fight stuff. It was just, it was just a one-sided stomp fest. And you're just going, okay, great. Big strong man fighting big strong bug man. T.A. gave his life. To be a pebble in the road of Cell. Meanwhile, Vegeta's just thumping his face like, yeah, this is nothing. And that's what Dragon Ball is. It's a bunch of people so below the level of where people should need to be to be relevant that they just don't matter. <laughs> Nail, Gohan, Piccolo, Vegeta, Krillin, in a climate where 20... 20- you name two people that suck. Sir, th- these are not accomplishments. Because at, at the end of the day, he could go from 500,000 to over a mil- over 100 million. So there, there's no accomplishment there. There's nothing, there's no struggle there. If he just went, hey, I can go up to 500 million. At the start of it, you'd be like, okay, we'll just kill us now. But he just went. There's nothing happening there's here. There's nothing happening here. But he just went. Ah, now it's over a million. And you go. How much stronger can he get? It's like, oh, literally a hundred times stronger. Okay. What's Krillin doing? Oh, he get destructive disc over. <laughs> That's what he's doing. But he's not. Two minute villains reign supreme. Frieza felt like nothing less than a god. And watching Goku putting everything he had into battling Frieza and eventually surpassing him. See. The free. This is why Dragon Ball Z was actually good for a while. This Frieza fight was a lot of stuff going on. There, you have Goku in the ocean doing the Kamehameha mm-hmm. ball. There was a lot of thinking and not just power, power, power. He tried so much stuff and Frieza just overcame it until Goku just went power. Stronger now. It was an interesting battle. Up until the moment he becomes a Super <laughs> Saiyan. And then it's just him too strong. Punch, punch, punch. Ah, ta, 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 ta. And that's just not interesting. I understand. It maybe it's interesting in the cathartic nature of, oh, Frieza has been torturing us for some 40 episodes. Now he's finally getting his comeuppance. But wouldn't you rather see a back and forth? Sort of thing, as opposed to he's just getting stomped, and he's still getting stomped, and he's still getting stomped. Oh, now he's a hundred percent of a hundred, and he's still getting stomped. And then Goku pities him. <laughs> I can't say that uh, people would want to see that because Hogan was popular for like a decade. Yes, and that's exactly what it was. Hogan gets beat down a lot, and then he hawks up, and he wins. And that's what Dragon Ball was. 
the heroes getting beat down a lot, they hawk up and they win. Nothing to think about. No dastardly stuff on the side. Nothing. Just hawk up and win. It was nothing short of inspirational. It no, really it felt like this character had gone to a monumental. No, it wasn't. He didn't do anything to earn that. His no. friend died. It wasn't. How do you get insp inspired by that? Uh, oh, there's this opposing force in my life that I need to overcome that seems so un unobtainably overcomable. Uh, how? How? What do you get from Dragon Ball to overcome that? You know why this is bush. If Goku had done all that training on the ship and then came and beat Frieza, you can go, wow, training pays off. But he didn't. He beat Ginyu. Ginyu took his body. He got beat to sh And then he healed until he was stronger. If Vegeta was all that training stronger than Goku, you could say, wow, training works. But it doesn't. It just doesn't. He you just got good genes. And now you stronger. And now, oh, my friend died, me mad, me 50 times stronger. After getting several times stronger from the juice. ...ordeal and somehow come out the other end and survived. This aspect of Dragon Ball Z is one of the main qualities that would come to define what Shonen Battle Manga is. And be echoed in many classic arcs that followed oh, through it. That's... It, it, that's the worst part that nobody should emulate. You, you go you go to Naruto, which is like the most direct one thing. to one. <laughs> look at look at Kaku versus Team Nine. They're Kaku. Yeah. Haku. Yeah, okay. Haku and Zabuza. There's nothing that's just me stronger, me win now. But other than like uh the, 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 the demon fox thing. But that's that, that was also like uh, uh, my friend died, yeah. but it was also a, there, there's something to be said there because of um, it had been shown that the, the power was within the thought inside of him. Plus, this selfish dude who was selfish, he sacrificed himself in order to help his comrade. Mm -hmm. There's something to be said. There's there. something to be said there. But you look up at, until that moment, there was a lot of thinking around what was going on, how to beat this dude. There was, what, two fights with Zabuza? Where it's just like, here's this dude's power. How do we beat him? And then you got to try to think around that. As opposed to get stronger. But then again, could could buff Naruto have beaten Zabuza? I don't think so. Because he, he was like, oh, this dude killing Hokages out here. <laughs> <laughs> the years... One Piece's Enos Lobby, Yu Yu Hakusho's Shock. Dark Tournament Saga, Hunter x Hunter's Chimera Ant Arc. These are some of the greatest arcs in Shonen history, and each one uses the same fundamental villain-centric structure that was defined and popularized in Dragon Balls. Again, JoJo came out the exact same year. Dio, part one, all of it. Part two, the, the Pillar Man. All of it. Part three. Dio. All of it. Villain struggle. It was just the structure of how to do villains. That's all it is. You're, you're attributing this to Dragon Ball. Like, it's the first thing that was just like, there's this dude at the end of the road. How do we beat him? I'm almost certain there were other battle mongers that did it. I'm sure I could look it up and go, you know, this had a central villain for the sure. arc or whatever. And uh, because Dragon Ball popularized a lot of it and influenced a lot of people, doesn't mean that uh, it is the starting point of that type of thing. There are probably things before it where that happened. I mean... It's just you, the structure of a battle manga. You look at movies, even though Lex Luthor wasn't the central, like... One to one punching, punching villain of Superman, Superman one, two, three, and four. They all had Lex Luthor in them, mm -hmm. and you go, oh, Lex Luthor, he's the central villain of this whole thing. He may not be punching them, but here he is being a villain. Yeah, Western comics had a lot of that, where it was like this is the central villain of this arc, and it's prevalent throughout. Um, uh, Batman, Batman getting his back broken. He had to figure out how to beat Bane. So, what do you... 
you said you so you talking like Dragon Ball was the first thing it's just like oh long red villain. It's it's not. It popularized, sure, but it, it it was just right place, right time. It's not because it did it well, it's just because it did it it did it with and the a most bunch eyes of, on it. And a bunch of people saw it happen. And like I'm sure there were a thousand people doing gymnastics before the first person that popularized a backflip and people went, yo! <laughs> See, with everything we've talked about up until now, it could be quite easy to boil Dragon Ball Z down as a consecutive series of one-on-one -on -one fights. And you know what? It totally was. It wasn't, though. Because uh, the first fight we see is Goku and Piccolo versus Raditz with a little Gohan in between there. The second one, the second big fight we see are the Cyberman versus the Z-Warriors. Uh, Yamcha was one-on-one, -on -one, but then Krillin just took out all the rest. The next one is Nappa versus everybody. The next one is Goku and Vegeta, but then everybody else comes to help. So the Not first, really. like, the first, like, six fights, three or four of them are group fights. There were very few one-on-one -on -one fights. Even throughout all... It basically, throughout all of Z, there were very few one-on-one -on -one fights. So I don't see that point. Dragon Ball Z's major plot points center around the idea of combat. But I also don't view that as an objective flaw either. And the reason... <laughs> you can't view something as an objective flaw because that makes it subjective. If it's an objective flaw, there's no argument mm -hmm. against it. It's objective. This there's, color. There's no reason why Naranja should have been killed by Killer Queen. Yeah, that's objective. Not King Crimson. Uh, objectively, that's not how his power works. There's no argument here. Subjectively, you could say Naranja should have died. That's subjective. Objectively, he could not have died that way. So you're going, you know, I don't see it as an objective flaw. It then it's not objective if yeah. you can argue against it. It doesn't it's, matter how you see it. If you feed this information into a robot, the robot will spit out information pertaining to what you fed into it, objective or subjective. Objectively, this slice of pizza has tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, and pepperoni. No arguments there. Subjectively, pepperoni it, isn't good. Done. Se pepperoni is a flaw of the pizza. Subjectively is that these characters are all written around the concept of fighting. And to explain what I mean here... I can't say that because uh, Frieza was written around the concept of conquering. He didn't care about fighting. Mm -hmm. Goku cares about a fight. Gohan hated fighting. Krillin doesn't like fighting. He just basically trips into fighting. The Them getting the Dragon Balls and, and Namek was just supposed to be a get the Dragon Balls mission. It wasn't a fight mission. They didn't know anybody was going to be there. Bulma is not a fighter. Trunks hates fighting. He doesn't want to fight. He just wants a peaceful future. He just wants to save these people. He isn't going in there, I got to get stronger. If the androids weren't around, go. that Trunks would not care about fighting. And the young Trunks only fights because he wants to impress his dad. And Gotien only fights because he wants to impress Trunks. So... These characters aren't written around the fight. Goku is written around the fight. Vegeta is written around getting better than Goku, just being the best. But that's not necessarily the fight. If he was just the strongest, he wouldn't care about a actual fight. Goku wants to test himself. Vegeta just wants to be the strongest. Gohan doesn't want to fight. This Trunks doesn't want to fight. Krillin doesn't want to fight. Tien wants to fight. Yamcha doesn't really want to fight. So what are you talking about? These characters are written around the fight. They, uh, most of them don't want to fight. I don't know what Piccolo wants. I think he just wants to be a, a uncle now. <laughs> I, because you know what? I, I will say that. Because in Super, uh, Goku goes, Piccolo, you want a piece of this? And Piccolo's like, I wouldn't be able to be him. No thanks. <laughs> yeah, that happened in the Broly movie. Like, no. <laughs> Ew. No. So, Piccolo doesn't want to fight. He just wants to live and be happy. And his happiness is with Gohan and Pan. And man, Pan is amazing. But yeah, these characters aren't written around a fight. They're not written around... There needs to be a fight to happen for these characters to have purpose. Yes. 
their purpose is not to fight. Let's take a little look at this scene from early on in the Android Saga. Goku and company receive a cryptic warning from the future that in three years, evil androids will rise up and devastate civilization. And Bulma suggests that by using the Dragon Balls, they could stop the androids before they ever activate. But Goku and the rest of the Z fighters outright refuse. They want- Horrible. Okay, that's, yes, one horrible. Because they're thinking about themselves as opposed to the people that the androids will slaughter. 100% confirmed. Goku is a piece of sh there. Vegeta is just being Vegeta. And Tien is just being Tien. They're all pieces of sh for wanting to fight over... Over the safety of the planet. And he goes, I'll fight too. I want to test what I'm capable of. If I die honorably in battle, then so be it. What about everybody else that will die? Unhonorably. Outside of battle. Don't you think that they would rather have the choice to press a button and skip to the result of the androids dying? As they're standing on the cliff overlooking West City and they see that first explosion, I'm sure they went, that's, whoops. That's at least 10 people dead. And you could have prevented that. Even though you go, eh, hey, Dragon Balls, that's still somebody going, I had a hole put in my chest and I felt that. And I will never not feel that. Boy, there's some post-dramatic stress out there. Out this world. People just look up to the sky and see a blast falling, and then they dead, and they wake up alive. Terrible. This this giant bug, man, ate me. <laughs> I felt that, that stinger going into me, Nothing. sucking my essence out. Nothing's going to take that. I can never forget that. I he's wished back with the Dragon Ball. That dude doesn't matter. Yes, he does. <laughs> or are you telling me he doesn't matter, which is a problem? And I'm sure, I'm sure a uh, freaking Krillin was like, let's do that. Why aren't you showing the people that I'm sure did not want to fight? I'm sure Yamcha was like, guys, let's not fight them. Uh, Krillin was like, guys, let's not fight them. Gohan was like, guys, let's not fight them. Because it's stupid. It's stupid. You're placating to these pieces of sh You're go This dude is definitively going, the future is in ruins because of these two things. Let's they kill everybody. Okay, let's fight them. Let's, let's see if we can prevent that. Yes, we can. Let's do the Dragon Ball. No, by our fists. That's terrible. And if that doesn't happen, this whole arc does not happen. I'm sure, I'm sure Luffy would have rather not have fought Luchi and them and just went on to the next yeah, island with... Got Robin and dipped. Luffy only fights these people because he don't like them. They're pieces of... Sh if, if he went to one island and it was cool and he went to the next island, he would be fine. The Straw Hats would be fine. They would be super happy just going to island, to island, to island, Ooh. having fun. But there's a fight that happens that they see yeah. that they need to change the way this island is. It's taken over by this piece of sh Let's beat this piece of sh for this person I just met. Not... This guy said that if we fight this dude, everyone dies. Oh, we have this way to make us not fight this dude. Luffy went into Whole Cake like, we're not fighting Big Mom. We're just getting Sanji. Grab, grab and run. It was a snatch and run. That was the whole reason to go into Whole Cake. He did not fight Big Mom. Big Mom made him mad. He did one punch to her, and then the rest was, we running. But here it's just like. This Bulma, so do not save lives because we want to fight people. So stupid. Terrible. And this is a positive? This is a plus? That these that these characters are pieces of sh That our hero is going, we are fine endangering people as long as we get the thrill of battle? Terrible. Get out of here. Get out of here. To face the incoming android threat... They want to test themselves against these new, more powerful foes. And people died! People died because of it. Definitively. Terrible. Even, even if it's one person. That's one person that could have been avoided. That's one person whose blood is on your hand. And at this point, the Dragon Ball was, you get wished back once, and that was it. So all those people that died in the Saiyan Saga that may have died here, they just gone. 
Y'all don't even Avoid think it. about the people that it's, have died multiple times in the series through these citywide explosions and taking out people. Because it's just nebulous people. It's, it's, it's not person getting wished back. It's people. People getting wished back. And it's just the group is getting wished back. And you just go, people are getting wished back. They die. They're getting wished back. Vegeta, boom, blasts, Majin Vegeta, boom, blasts the, the, the stadium. And you go, yeah, I wish him back. It's the f***ing dumbest. It's the worst. And I hate this series. I used to love it. Humble confirmation that they and most of humanity will be wiped out in the process. The takeaway from this scene is that combat wasn't actually a way to solve problems to these characters. Rather, it was justification for why they exist at all. It's the that's, only reason. That's terrible. That's horrible. You only exist to fight. This is my purpose in life is to find the next fight. Now, for someone like Ryu, he's traveling the world, not doing it. He's not endangering people by finding the next opponent. No, he's going winning tournaments, and they go, hey, come get this trophy, and he's already gone to the next fight. Traveling the world, testing his strength against people. He's not going, this is... I'm going to let I'm gonna let this happen, and it's going to kill people, but it's going to provide a better fight for me to test myself. You can absolutely test yourself. Man. That's fine. As long as you aren't purposely putting people in danger to test yourself. There is nothing you could have done against Boo. Because you guys were just like, let's trust the Kais. Let's see where this goes. And also, Gohan was put into danger. Not killed or anything. He's got his energy sucked and they dipped. And, that's, and they healed him. Done. Fine. Nothing is lost. Gohan gets stronger. <laughs> but here it's just like, one per... If... if if it was just like, oh, they're going to kill Chi-Chi, I bet they would be like, nah, 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 wish him away. They're going to kill Dende. Nah, wish him away. This ain't happening. But nebulous people? Whatever. And you know what? Goku is doubly stupid because he ain't take his medicine. <laughs> he knew this was happening. Goku knew he was dying from this heart attack. Eh. He knows people are going to die from these androids. Eh. Do I get to punch somebody? What's the problem then? And this is a positive. These were all proud fighters who put an immense amount of personal weight into their physical strength and skill. Don't show, go on. Or to put it a different way, Dragon Ball Z wasn't a story about fighting. It was a story about a group of characters who really loved to fight. No, no. There's a handful of characters that really love to fight. And that's it. Vegeta Krillin, and Vin Krillin uh, doesn't. Krillin doesn't love to fight. Gohan doesn't love to fight. Why do you think he off, you know, raising kids and being a scholar? One of the first episodes, Goku, Piccolo goes, aren't you excited to be fighting Raditz, somebody who's strong? And Goku goes, no, I'm terrified. Because he got my son. And this mother big strong. What? And then eventually he just becomes, he just I becomes, love the fight. I love fighting. I'm a fight man. I love the battle. Let this dude go. He, we, I can fight him later. I'm gonna kill all y'all in this planet. Uh, Goku, get him here. I'm gonna kill y'all. Tomorrow, I'm coming back. This was a mistake. <laughs> this can't be a mistake. Conflict was how these characters defined themselves. Whether it's Vegeta's identity as the Prince of All Saiyans, Goku's pride in being the strongest under the heavens, or Frieza's belief that he is the most powerful being in the universe. Vegeta, I mean, uh, Frieza didn't need to prove anything. He sat, he didn't train, he didn't do nothing. He no. sat back and just went, I'm the strongest. Sure. He goes, uh, this planet could get stronger than me. How about this energy blast dead? There's no combat there. He was scared. He ran from the conflict. Because he saw that Saiyans could possibly get stronger than him. So he went, we wiping them out. They've been great in conquering planets for me. But they're a threat, so they just gotta go. And then for years, for decades, there was never a threat again. So, until two Saiyans came. So, what are we doing here? He's not about conquering being combat or anything or being or conflict he is the strongest in the universe uncontested 
So there's no combat there. There's no conflict. He doesn't want conflict. He wants to conquer. And he was conquering. You could see this both in the delight these characters took while fighting, as well as the rigorous and often grueling training they would put themselves through between battles. And Okay, you're showing Goku and Vegeta, but not Frieza. Because that doesn't apply for Frieza. And it, it basically only applies to Goku, Vegeta, and Tien. The three characters <laughs> you show. Everybody else is kind of like, well, we don't really want to fight. Chao Tzu don't want to fight. But, like, but you, but they have to because it's a threat, and that's that's all it is. It's just they're sitting around waiting for a threat, and then it happens, and then you go, "Well, I guess we fighting now." And that's the thing: Gohan does not need a threat. He is happy being Gohan. These characters need a threat and conflict and battle to be happy. Goku, they could have done anything with Goku in the afterlife, but they went tournament, fight, man, go. Not him going around and training with all these dead masters. Not him going to all these people and meeting them and talking to them. No, he just go what Goku fights and now he's going to fight. And whereas Gohan, he's in school playing baseball. But people ain't like that. They ain't want that. <laughs> no, sir. Where to fight? It was here in these scenes that you could <laughs> really witness the character's passion for both combat and self-improvements as they'd struggle to surpass their limits and achieve new plateaus of strength. You see that more with Vegeta, but you don't really see that with Goku. Yeah, I was about to say, um, Gohan, after the Saiyan arc, uh, uh, from the from him training in the Saiyan arc to, like, right before the androids, no training. And then he trained a little bit, and then he didn't train, and then he trained in a hyperbolic time chamber, and then no training for the rest of the series. So he trained three times in the entire show? hell as a grown-ass adult these scenes were incredibly influential you were watching characters who were extremely passionate about something and who poured everything they had into it and it made you want to work hard as well you wanted to feel the same rush that they did pause vegeta and trunks go into the hyperbolic time chamber we're showing vegeta with fire in his eyes and his mouth and he comes out any stronger than cell we saw nothing of his training. We saw nothing of Trunks' training to get stronger than him. But they did. See, where's the influence in that? The only reason Goku was trying to get stronger is because he knew the threats that were on Namek. So he was like, I have to train my hardest to get stronger than these people. Vegeta was just training to be better than Goku. This also gave the fight scenes a more personal and intense emotional edge. It doesn't. It really doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, there's no point in time where I'm like, yep, those 500 push-ups really is influencing this fight. The only fight that was uh, that you can see the training being influential is this Goku and Vegeta fight. But Goku Cell, there's no influential stuff there. There's no emotional weight in that. There's nothing. It's just... It's only this fight, really. And I really wish, I really wish he would at least try to stretch out the other vi clips or uh, put black bars on these or something. Yeah, because it's just... It's really distracting seeing the different fine. aspect ratio. It's fine. It's, it's just me. It's just an editing thing. That's just, uh, it's irksome. It's like the MAGA panels in the last revisited arc. <laughs> yeah, this just irks me. These characters had sweat and bled to reach their current level of strength. They carried an intense amount of pride. So they all are the other characters. But you know what? Wasn't even close. Yeah. Tien's training harder than everybody. He doesn't live in a house. He's out in the mountains training 24-7. But he's never reaching Goku's level. Never. No matter what he does. So training, how is that fair? How is that fair? Training doesn't matter unless you're training and you're a Saiyan. And it's time to get stronger. Otherwise, it just doesn't matter. Three years of training, and you got, like, what, two times stronger? It's nothing. But then all of a sudden, hop in this room and get 50 times stronger. Great. Whereas Tien, he's just like, I'm not even going to waste my time in the chamber. I'm not going to be of any use. Oh, great. <laughs> ...in their abilities, and it made combat feel personal. 
that combat feels personal because it's a fight that that it was a grudge match that was like eight years in the making. But every other fight, nobody gives a sh- who gives a sh- about Vegito versus Super Boo. There's no emotional <laughs> resonance there. It's just a fight. <laughs> What are you talking about? No one gives it. Trunks versus Sale. It's just like, well, Trunks is stronger now, and now they're fighting. You can see the emotional in Trunks is, they'll destroy the future, no! But there was no conflict or fight there, because they were just so much stronger than Trunks that he ain't even matter. So there's no emotional. What are you talking about? It feels personal. And it- Again, I'm never going, yo. All them sit-ups that Goku did is really influencing. When he was when he was clowning on the Ginyu Force, I wasn't like, yeah, sit-ups. I'm just like, well, he's stronger now. A monumental and validating while defeat was emotional and devastating. A lot. The, the defeat was emotional and devastating because most of the times Vegeta was defeated, he was half crying or screaming. <laughs> and then... After that f- defeat by 18, he's just looking up in the rain. <laughs> what <laughs> melodramatic sh- get, get some balls, Gita. Seriously, and, and when Goku loses, it's just like, man, how am I going to beat this dude? As opposed to Vegeta, who spends 80% of his fights going, I'm the prince of all Saiyans, I'm the strongest, I'm going to kill you. So there's two Sonys, and they go on, just like, well, I guess I'm fighting now. That's, that's all. Because they need me. I don't want to be here. I want to be home. <laughs> I want to be with Mr. Piccolo. Most of these characters didn't just mean a loss, it was a deep personal affront to No, that Videl was egregious. Yeah. That was just a raffle stomping, and it was it was kind of uncomfortable. It was quite uncomfortable. But again, training just doesn't matter, because here comes this dude that is just magically stronger. Yeah. And this isn't a, a, a an innuendo for magic. No, he is literally enhanced by magic, so he is stronger. So there's nothing that she could have done in that moment to be stronger than him. They even went last time, oh, those dudes were weak. What happened to them? And now they're just killing her. So she, so all of her training, all, we saw her learning to fly, pulling out that magic ball from her stomach. Training all this stuff doesn't matter. She's been training all her life under the greatest martial artist in Hercule. Who is a legitimate monster. Let's not forget. He's pulling trucks and ripping phone books. And Gohan goes, she probably don't even realize she's stronger than her dad. But here we but go. It just doesn't matter. That training, all that all that strength in that martial artist in 16, the year. 16, 17 years of training and fighting. She's taking out three, four dudes that have guns by herself as a teenage girl. But here comes this, this dude that is magically enhanced. And it's just like, well... You have all a that don't matter. Zero percent chance of winning. All that stuff you did, it don't matter. She goes, "I kicked him so hard, I broke his neck. I'm sorry." And he just stands up like, "What ifs?" So what can you do in that situation? Nothing. So there's n- there's no training. There's, it doesn't matter. The losses feel devastating when there's such overwhelming losses. When go because you can feel it with Vegeta, because against Frieza because. Uh, he had these years of hating Frieza secretly, and he's like, I can finally beat this guy. I'm stronger. And it's just like, I'm not even close to this guy. And it's just so frustrating. And he's hurt by it. And you can feel that. You can feel his frustration of decades of wanting to overcome Frieza and become this thing that Frieza always feared. It's a retribution for his entire race of which he's the prince. You can feel that loss. You don't feel the loss if it Gohan losing the <laughs> boo. Nobody gives a sh- Gohan getting his neck broken. It was like, well, there was no chance he was going to win anyway. <laughs> so who gives a sh- So who cares? Oh, they saw themselves, and something they may not recover from for years to come. He did. He recovered within like 20 minutes. Never mentioned it again. <laughs> he was just like, there has to be, there could be something beyond hyperbolic time chamber. Let's go. I'm, I'm so much stronger than that 18-bit that beat me, and I'm stronger than the dude that absorbed her brother. So, there we go. If this had not happened... And he just went, oh, I'm late to the fight, and I didn't even get a chance to fight him. Oh, they're super strong. Let me go train. Would have been no different. He didn't need this loss to get stronger. 
This also meant that when protagonist stepped out to face one of the show's immensely powerful villains, there was a real emotional weight to it. Like it wasn't. Uh, for Gohan, you can kind of see it, but that's only because he he was thrown to the lions. <laughs> so you see a kid. Okay, you can go. This kid is a hunter of wild beasts. But you see a kid thrown into a lion pit, you're still going to go, whoa. Wait a second, wait a second. And then they're like, ah, he got it. And then everybody around them going, no, he don't. And then the lions are snipping at him, and then the dude that threw him in is like, holy sh, he might not have this. And then the kid has it. You can see that because it's a boy that's thrown to the lion. Sure, you could go, you know, he's killed like 40 lions, but it's still a kid thrown to a lion. <laughs> and you're going, holy, sh okay. There's always been this lion killer in him. <laughs> okay. But he bleeding and getting bit. <laughs> and the lion toying <laughs> with him like, where's the lion killer? <laughs> and then the lion opens up the door and now there's lions running around the zoo mauling people. <laughs> And the boy's looking up at all these lion cubs, killing all these people, just beating his friends and, and nipping at them and tearing off legs. And then he goes, I just got to kill the lion now. <laughs> and then a robot says, it's okay to kill the lion. <laughs> and he goes, yes, it is okay. Finally. I can finally kill this lion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, nobody told me that I could have just killed him. Oh, okay. So, yes, you can feel that with Gohan, and you can feel that with the Vegeta loss. But that 18 Vegeta loss, it was, it was just Vegeta being arrogant and, sh and he got humbled. V Frieza was a frustration. That was super sad. But then again, that's the same thing that happened with Cell. Perfect Cell. Arrogant, humbled. Yep. It has nothing to do... It's not emotional. It's just Vegeta being an arrogant piece of sh and getting humbled same by somebody that's Zarbon. super real. Arrogant, humble. Same thing with Frieza. Arrogant, no, humble. No, Frieza was different. No, I'm talking about, um, like, first form to second form. Okay, yeah, yeah, More than just a battle of good versus evil, yeah, but something that really <laughs> mattered to both characters. So, the plot How's that person on the cell? Yeah. His whole thing was, I want to fight strong people. I'm going to blow up the Earth. Then what was the next form? Go to the next planet and fight... Hey, y'all got strong people? No, boom. Hey, y'all got strong people? No, boom. That would have been it for sale. That's not personal. Dragon Ball Z revolved around a shifting power balance between its heroes and villains. And so when a character did hit it... Because the villains... This is the structure of every Dragon Ball arc. The heroes are there. The villains are a bunch... Or a lot stronger. Um, the mini villains are stronger. Then the strong hero comes, who's stronger than the mini villain. But the actual main villain is way stronger than the all the heroes. So the heroes have to under overcome that. Like you said, it's, a, it's not a balance. It's more like a, a race. It's like, this is the strength. Okay, I'm stronger than you. I'm stronger than you. I'm way stronger than you. But that dude, at the villain at the end of the finish line is running backwards. And then the hero catches up and passes him. It's not fun to watch because <laughs> it, it, it wasn't like you, you worked. He's, he's going to beat him. And it's not like you worked to overcome the dude that was so far ahead. He just got arrogant and ran backwards. And he and, just put his arms up and did a, a trick. Like that girl that did a trick off the final uh, skiing heel. And, and she whipped it. And then the next person won. How do you feel good about that gold medal? And How do you feel good about that? And it's just like Shaba Odi. There was no beating them, so it was a run. And guess what? It's not like they came back tomorrow and was like, all right, Kizaru, it's your time is now. It's like, no. <laughs> Two years later, maybe we could beat them? Nope. But, nope. But, but, you know, it's not like, oh, oh, we'll, we'll get Frieza later. No. There was no getting Kizaru and Kuma later. A new level of power, it was a major turning point in the story. And these moments, I've got more power. Now I've got more power. Now I've got more power. Okay. Turning points. How great. Moments were conveyed through Dragon Ball Z's now iconic transformation scenes. Because of how the. And anybody that don't got that, who cares about you? 
Who cares? Y'all not hitting our level. That's not fair. That's There's not fair no, to somebody t- like T in training. No way. This dude is just like, oh, not only is he a saying who can get 50 times stronger instantly, 50, 100, 2,000, 200 times, now he's a literal god. I beat that dude 20 years ago in a tournament, fairly, with my martial arts, and now he's a god. How do you... Th- what? Nobody's talking about that. That's just super not fair. So, you know, all this hard work and training and inspiring. But then you look at Tien, who ain't doing nothing. Who's a lifelong martial artist, and he, he, he literally cannot do that. He literally cannot catch up to them. He was on the level of Goku at a point, and then 20 years later, he can't even sniff his jaws. So, so you just looking at this in the terms of Saiyans, and then you got your Piccolo, who's just like, well, I could just absorb this dude and get instantly stronger, and also, I guess I'm just training, so I'm, I'm uh, as good as Frost now, dot, 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 whatever. But you're not looking at the humans. And how unfair it is for them. <laughs> Framed as heroes and villains, the transformations of both archetypes felt drastically different. When a villain transformed, it was a nightmare. The worst possible case scenario as the gap in... pause. Boo was unbeatable, and then he transformed, and now he's just even more unbeatable. Yeah, nobody was touching Boo. Yeah, so what's the thing? You can go, oh, because of the clash for Form 1 Frieza and Vegeta, you can go, okay, maybe they're near on the level. So Frieza had to. But wasn't nobody touching Boo. So now it's just he's even stronger now. There's no difference between somebody being 10 times stronger or a million times stronger than somebody. It's all just you're not beating them. Yeah, if they're, if you're, yeah, yeah, like you said, if you're 10 times stronger, a million times stronger. Krillin, Krillin in the Saiyan arc fighting Vegeta is no different from Krillin in the Saiyan arc fighting Kid Buu. He's not doing anything. So power escalation really doesn't matter once you get to a certain point. Because like I said, in Dragon Ball Super, you're either weaker than Beerus, which means you don't matter. You're on the level of Beerus, which means you kind of matter. Or you're stronger than Beerus. That's the only three levels we got. Now widened into an abyss. A villain's transformation was also something they either always had access to or could only be achieved through external means, such as Cell consuming the androids or Boo absorbing other fighters. And this worked very differently to how the heroes transformed. Heroes' transformations, for the most part, were internal, something that could only be achieved through massive amounts of the aforementioned training or. Ha- no. Um, Kia, Gohan, Great Ape. That wasn't. That's how. That's basically how they beat Vegeta. Goten transformed into a Super Saiyan without even being on how to fly. There's no massive amount of training. He was being pushed back by Kiki until he went Super Saiyan kick. What happened? <laughs> Where was the massive amounts of training? Where? Well, that doesn't fit the narrative. So we're gonna show Gohan. Like. Everybody always just goes Super Saiyan, ah, and then they go, yeah, Trunks and, and Ghost Hand, whatever, whatever. That's always the outlier that people go. And then maybe you every now and again, somebody just going, S-Cells, question mark? <laughs> oh, man. We're not even getting into that. Uh, we're running out of time for this one, actually. Having to push through some deep emotional barrier that would then allow them to unleash their true potential. Again, and because we never of how these moments were framed, they felt monumental. Both because they... We, all, we also never saw that with Super Saiyan 3. He just did it. And Vegeta's was technically off screen in the manga. He just showed up and was just like, I'm a Super Saiyan. They gave it to him in the anime. But again, it was just like a flashback that was like four minutes. And we never saw uh, Goku obtain a Super Saiyan 2 either. So he just went from one to three. He just skipped two and three and just like, well, I have them. So there, there was nothing there. Had a ray of hope in the face of villains, as well as being deeply...
because they transformed and got even stronger. That's not fair. No. It's not fun to watch. Not anymore. Because you can't, you can't, you, there's nothing equivalent to that for a Krillin. So Krillin will always be on that level. But, oh, Goku, he could just get 200 times stronger instantly. He just chooses not to. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, I'm getting blown. My future is in ruins, Goku. Could you, would you mind taking out this black Goku? I think on, I'm going to spar with him a little. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'll do it on my time. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 calm down, calm down. It's going to get done, but let's just fight a little bit. What, what? Where's the struggle in that? Because it's just like, oh, he needs to warm up. He wants to enjoy the fight. You're handicapping yourself in order to enjoy the fight. Why don't you just take your level down to level like uh, power level 300 and then fight Krillin? Because that's basically the same thing. significance to the personal narratives of these characters. And the reason for this is that these scenes represented major moments in our characters' lives, the culmination of months, years, or even lifetimes of training and struggle. Instances but where a character's entire existence is changed and they finally become what they were meant to be. Why would you show Super Saiyan 3? That came out of nowhere. It's dumb. And you know it's dumb. They just said he trained for this, and then he just did it. There was no struggle. There wasn't any, oh, no, King Kai double died, and now I'm Super Saiyan 3. Goten and Trunks basically farted around for half a year <laughs> in the hyperbolic time chamber, thinking up things like the volleyball move. And the screaming angry wombat. And as a teenager, where you were constantly unsure of every aspect of your physical and emotional identity, these transformations no, don't, don't were a that on powerful everybody. fantasy to believe in. The idea that we all had a massive amount of latent potential inside us that could be unleashed in an instant and change everything. If you're a Saiyan. Absolutely. <laughs> or you have somebody put their hand on your head and just go, stronger now. There's... Yeah, these are out, these are outside forces influencing your strength. Not not you going, yo, I'm a fat piece of sh I need to exercise. That's oh. different than somebody just going, d just sucking out your gut and just going, you're you're thin now. That's all that that's that's what the the, the transformations and the unlike potentials are. And Gohan was always strong. He was always hidden strong. Everybody's not hitting smart. There's nothing so. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's not hitting driven. Like, Gohan was born strong. It's not the same. This is also yet another aspect of the series that would come to define what shonen battle titles were. With major moments of even modern titles still featuring these same kind of transformations that were defined and popularized. Oh. You're just going transformation equals Dragon Ball. No, what do they represent? Luffy trained for two years for that. For that moment. And he goes, boom. Now I can use all these hockeys because I trained on this island with this hockey master. Not just I, I came on this. Not I jumped in a room and my dad said, imagine Frieza killing everybody. And I got mad and I got 50 times stronger. Hey, how about this? Power Rangers transformed. <laughs> Pokemon transformed. Transformers. Digimon. Trans Every single Digimon transformation, Digivolution, was an emotional moment. A hopeless moment where they're like, oh, death or get stronger now, please. <laughs> or shoot an arrow through my heart or something. You're just going, transformation is just like Dragon Ball, so they influenced everybody. We're done here. And the transformation of uh, stuff like, um, like Luffy, Luffy is the only one that can do his transformation. It wasn't because he was born a Saiyan. It's not it wasn't because, because he, he had a blatant ability to do that. No, he going, I saw these people do this thing. I'm going to try it. And then he did it like, yo, that works. Oh, there's giants here? What if I made my fist big? Only he's doing that stuff. Only he's thinking about that stuff. 
I'm gonna blow I'm gonna blow air into my muscles and make them really strong and coated with hockey. Punch stronger, better control. Makes a lot of sense. Jump into a room, get angry, fifty times stronger. 